Hello students, in this video we'll do norm and interproc calculations on an interproc space with respect to an orthonormal basis. Let's let phi1 through phi n be an orthonormal basis of Rn. It can be any finite dimensional vector space, actually it won't change anything if it's a finite dimensional vector space. Then, for any v, let's write this v in Rn, so v in Rn, for any vector v in Rn, we have the Plancherel theorem. Plancherel says that the norm of v squared is the sum j goes from 1 up to n of v with the inner product of v with phi j, quantity squared. Of course, that's just the dot product, right? So this is just the sum j goes from 1 up to n of v dot phi j, quantity squared, right? So this is true in Rn. That's for an arbitrary vector space. Okay, excellent. And so how do we prove this over here? Well, the proof basically follows from the coefficient representation of the v, right? So we know that v, so the proof is simple, right? The proof is just that v is the sum j goes from 1 up to n of v dot phi j, phi j. And so if I do the normal v squared, this implies that the normal v squared... And here's the only catch with this. The only catch with this is when you dot v with itself, you have to use a different index from j, right? So this is going to be the sum. j goes from 1 up to n of v dot phi j, phi j, dot, dot what? Dot, the sum k goes from 1 up to n of v dot phi k, phi k. All right? Because in principle, for an arbitrary vector space, we don't know, the, we, don't, we have to basically foil every single term in this out. What we're really doing here is we're just foiling along the diagonal, which shows us the strength of these orthonormal sets. For an arbitrary basis over here, I'll have to do every single of the n squared calculations in that product. With an orthonormal set, I can only do it along the diagonal, so it's n. So I get a dimensional reduction using orthonormal sets. Okay? So formally, what will this be? So formally, this is the sum j goes from 1 up to n. The sum k goes from 1 to n of v dot phi j. Then, if this was a complex vector space, I had to put bars everywhere, but we're in a real vector space. So I can write this as v dot phi k. Right, so for those of you who are doing this in a complex vector space, remember to put a bar here, right? So I don't really lose anything if I put a bar or a complex conjugate there because this is a real thing anyway, right? And then what do we have? Then we have phi j dot phi k. Now, what is phi j dot phi k? And this is a very useful thing that we see in tensor analysis is that this is the Kronecker symbol delta j k. And whenever you see delta j k, delta j k in a sum implies if and only if j can be replaced with k. So every instance of j can be replaced with k. In other words, you're summing along the what? You're summing along the diagonal. So the Kronecker symbol takes a double sum and sums along a, di a diagonal, in this case the j equals k diagonal. Right? So this is going to be exactly what? The sum, I can replace either j or k, it's irrelevant. j goes from 1 up to n of vj, v phi j, and then another v phi j. And then delta jj is equal to 1. So this is exactly what? This is exactly the sum. j goes from 1 up to n of v dot phi j quantity squared, right? In the case of an inner product space, you have to let the modulus squared because there's a complex conjugate. If there was a modulus here, this would be a z, z bar. And we know that z, z bar in the complex case would be modulus z quantity squared. Okay, but in real space, this just boils down to the ordinary square. Now, as a consequence, I can symmetrize this, right? I can use polarization and get Parseval for free, right? And so what does Parseval tell me? So Parseval tells me the following. So Parseval's theorem 
for these spaces. It doesn't give me the norm relationship, it gives me the inner product relationship. If I have two vectors v and w, if I do v dot w in my space, which would be v dot w, by symmetrizing this and polarizing it, I'll give this is the sum j goes from 1 up to n of v dot phi j, and then w dot phi j, right? So in other words, you're summing over all the inner products of v with the phi j times w with the phi j, right? In the complex space, would be, this would be a bar over here, and so we get exactly so the um, these expressions over here for Parseval and the Planchard theorem for doing the dot products, but in terms of the orthonormal basis and doing the norm calculations. Now, these the results basically are come from more general things in Fourier analysis when you have infinite dimensional infinite dimensional orthonormal sets that you need to prove actually converge to a base element, that every element in an infinite dimensional space will converge something like this. So these results are very, very powerful analogs. There are very powerful analogs of these things in infinite dimensional space when you do Fourier representations. Thank you very much.